Hey everybody and welcome to the 5 Bytes Podcast. I'm your host, Rory Monahan. The podcast is brought to you by my sponsors, Goliath Technologies and Liquidware. And now for some news. There was a significant disruption to AWS, Cloudflare, and other services this week. The disruption in question affected only certain regions and sites, but appeared to be a sizable number of them. Though, the CTO of Cloudflare stated that it only affected about 10% of their traffic. BleepingComputer.com, who themselves experienced disruption on their own site, reported that a route leak is the suspected cause, which is when a different ISP advertises IP addresses that do not belong to them, causing IP conflicts and bad routing to occur. I'm not networking savvy and I'll never pretend to be, but I find it really interesting that something like this could happen. It's like a larger scale type of incident of something that a certain fellow MVP who will remain unnamed described to me once about him booting up his own DHCP server on a hotel's network, bringing down their own systems. It was another rough week for ransomware stories. The BBC reports that Norsk Hydro, a Norwegian aluminium producer, has 22,000 computers taken out of commission at 170 different sites worldwide. The most recent update suggests that they refuse to pay the ransom, but have spent 45 million pounds trying to restore their business to full operation. And it's getting scary out there. The BBC also reported that yet another town in the United States, this time Lake City, Florida, got breached with ransomware, and in this case, they decided to pay the ransom for 42 bitcoins, which roughly comes in around $500,000 in order to regain their access. This is after two weeks of outages. Reports suggest that the IT staff at Lake City disconnected staff computers within minutes of the attack starting, but it was too late. Some email accounts were inaccessible and some services for municipal payments could not be made. The BBC report states insurance will pay all but $10,000 of the money lost, with the taxpayers footing that $10,000. HPE held their Discover conference in Las Vegas last week. It was just wrapping up as I recorded the audio for last week's episode. At the time of recording last week's episode, the announcement getting most focus was Primera, a new intelligence storage solution that promises 100% uptime. The marketing jargon also states it can be set up in minutes, upgrades transparently, and is delivered as a service. As with all storage solutions, they also claim to have an upper hand when it comes to performance. Pretty remarkably, HPE also vowed during the event that they will deliver everything as a service by 2022. It's interesting as if you follow the podcast, you'll have heard me talk about HPE GreenLake earlier this year and last year. Something I know executives are looking for these days in different organizations is the ability to recreate what you get with a public cloud service into their own data centers. Something that can scale instantly on demand and can compete on terms of flexibility. It'll be interesting to follow the developments of this and see how it all pans out. The Windows Terminal app that was mentioned previously on the podcast is now available on Windows 10. It requires Windows 10 version 18362 or higher and can even be run on Xbox One, which is pretty cool. Also pretty cool, multiple tabs for PowerShell. Yes, please. Of course, with terminals comes the possibility to also customize to your heart's content. Why should the Linux geeks have all the fun? And customizing this terminal is very simple. If you'd like to try it out for yourself, I will share an article on how to do just that with this episode of the podcast, which is episode 78, and you'll find that at 5bytespodcast.com under reference links. Raspberry Pi 4 has been released at its usual low price this time starting at $35 for the one gig of memory, $45 for two gigs, and $55 for four gigs. The highlights include a one gigahertz quad-core 64-bit ARM Cortex A72 CPU, which boasts three times the performance of the last model, 
It is LPDDR4 SD RAM that's available. There's full throughput gigabit ethernet, dual band 802.11ac wireless networking, Bluetooth version 5, two USB 3 and two USB 2 ports, dual monitor support at resolutions up to 4K, that kicks ass, video core 6 graphics supporting OpenGL ES 3.x, 4K P60 hardware decode of HEVC video, and complete compatibility with earlier Raspberry Pi products. It's been a few years since I bought my Model 2, but what a great little device that was. It served me very well, and I was running an open VPN on it for my home lab. Unfortunately, as demand is already through the roof for this device, as of yesterday, it looks like wait times to receive the device are already backlogged through to August. Forbes has reported on a new vulnerability by security researcher Safe Breach, which shows a Windows component called PC Doctor Toolbox, which is leveraged by some vendors, is at risk of being used to install and run malicious code. From reports, it's suggested that the highest risk vendor in this space is Dell, whose support assist feature that is ironically designed to protect from vulnerabilities is now suffering from this very vulnerability as it relies on the PC Doctor Toolbox. The PC Doctor Toolbox runs with admin level privileges as it could do auto updates. Dell are not the only ones affected by this as Corsair and Alienware also use this feature. The good news is Dell have already released a patch, so if you are a Dell customer, you better get patching. A few quick hits. According to 9to5Mac.com, Apple has hired Mike Filippo, one of the key designers of ARM. This leads itself further to the notion that this is the ultimate direction for Apple. Custom ARM chips to replace the current majority of Intel chips in their Macs. Office 365 and SharePoint Online customers will now be able to view, share, and edit PDF files directly from the services. No need to download and open separately. It's all direct within the product. ZDNet have reported that Microsoft may be considering bringing Android apps to its future Windows Lite edition. I could swear I read something like this before. And frankly, this article reads as rumor and speculation at this point, though Mary Jo has a pretty good track record of having some insider knowledge, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's true. I wasn't actually going to include this on the podcast, but I found it interesting as this very same week, Bill Gates was interviewed and brought up Android as an example of what he thought Microsoft should have built and that not doing so was one of his greatest regrets in business. Speaking of Microsoft, Microsoft have unveiled OneDrive Personal Vault. This brings an extra layer of security for your OneDrive online file storage with a strong authentication method or two-step verification required, which can include fingerprint, face recognition on Windows Hello compatible devices, PIN code, or a one-time code sent by text or email, or of course, by using the Microsoft Authenticator app. According to TechCrunch.com, Microsoft is also doubling the storage plan for its $199 a month standalone OneDrive subscription from 50 gigs to 100 gigs. If you're on a free plan, you'll be able to try Personal Vault too, but Microsoft will limit the number of files you could store in it. The feature will be available by the end of the year. A vulnerability has been identified in Citrix Workspace app and receiver for Windows that could result in local drive access preferences not being enforced, allowing an attacker read-write access to the client's local drives, which could enable code execution on the client device. This vulnerability has been assigned the number CVE-2019-11634. This particular vulnerability affects all versions of the Workspace app for Windows and Receiver for Windows. The fix is contained, however, in Citrix Workspace app version 19.04 or later and Receiver for Windows to LTSR 4.9CU6 version 4.9601. If you're on the LTSR train 
and you're not on CU6 yet, rather than patching to that, you do have the option to upgrade the receiver to update seven, which was released just earlier this week. Brian Madden posted a really interesting blog. He posted a question on Twitter earlier in the week. The question was, what can you tell your users to sell them on VDI? And he asked for people's favorite tips, tricks out there. Those in the community duly obliged with a bunch of great responses. I'm not going to give any away. Check out the article for yourself, which as always, and with everything I mentioned on the podcast, I'll share a link under reference links with this episode, which is episode 78 on 5bytespodcast.com. If you're in London next week, on July 4th at 9 a.m., Lakeside, Avanti, Igel, and Avanite are teaming together to bring a pretty unique panel discussion where some of the industry's most thought-provoking experts will explore how the digital workplace has evolved and their insight for what the future of end-user computing will look like. One of my favorite sessions that I used to see at like the old Briform conferences and some of the other tech conferences was Ruben's excellent Workspace 2020, which obviously next year is 2020. So this was several years ago, like probably four or five years ago. And I can still remember some of them and thinking, wow, they hit the nail on the head with that one. So check this out for sure. It should be very interesting. It's going to be held at the boardroom the British Library on Euston Road in London. And now this episode's weekly webinar. Starwind Software are holding a webinar on all things involving managing a vSphere environment. That includes choosing the right solutions, tuning and optimizing things properly, and just general tricks of the trade. The webinar will be held at 2 p.m. Eastern on July 3rd and you can register today. And now for this episode, scripts, tricks, and tips. This week's tip is to check out this cool illustration of the Windows boot process. It's very well done, and once I get a printer, it's definitely going to be one of the ones that goes up on my office wall. If you're listening to the audio-only version of the podcast, it shows the boot process from BIOS through bootloader and into the kernel phase, showing what the end user sees and what is going on at that point of what they're seeing. It's pretty cool. And before I sign off this episode, just real quick, I wanted to acknowledge my friend Steve, who has helped me out quite a bit with figuring out this whole podcasting thing. Steve has his own much better produced weekly podcast on the topic of pro wrestling called the Alleged Wrestling Podcast. Together with the Hallway Wrestling Podcast, they have a unique platform with live podcasts together with chat, and they cover the Irish wrestling scene too, which is pretty unique because it's pretty small and niche, at least for now. So if you're into wrestling, if that's one of your interests, for sure check out the Alleged Wrestling Podcast and the Hallway Wrestling Podcast. And that's it for another week. Thank you so much for listening.